This is our second series of videos on chapter two. And in this, this series, we're gonna have five videos that deal with carbohydrates and lipids. And in this first video, it's gonna be a real short one. We're gonna cover the major elements that are found in living things. And then we're also gonna talk about why carbon is so vital. Uh, the rest of the series will deal with uh, how monomers and polymers are made and how carbohydrates and lipids do the neat things that they do. So let's start off with what we got here on this slide. Uh, these are the major elements that are found in living things, and they include carbon. And carbon is vital because it is, let's pick a good color over here. Uh, let's use, let's use blue, okay? Uh, carbon is the backbone of all living things, okay? It's really kind of a boring molecule, but it's what everything's gonna be attached. And so we're gonna talk about that here in just a little bit, okay? Hydrogen is also found on everything. So every biomolecule is going to have hydrogen in it, okay? And then of course, oxygen, uh, vital, you find this in water, and this one's gonna be used to make a lot of what we're gonna call functional groups. And we're gonna learn about this in another video. Okay, and we'll spend a lot of time on that one. All right, phosphorus, this is what you're gonna find in DNA, you're also gonna find it in RNA. And when we get to chapter 12, we'll get into more of the details on this one. Okay, nitrogen is really, really important. You're gonna find this guy in proteins. And you're also gonna find it in the nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA. Okay, we'll cover those in other chapters. Okay, and then sulfur. Sulfur is something else that you're gonna find in proteins, okay? And so carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, nitrogen, and sulfurous. Okay, different teachers will give you different acronyms, but I have my students remember it this way, C-H-O-N-P-S, CHOMPS. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and uh, sulfur. All right. You can arrange these letters any way that you want to help you learn it, but this is how I have my students do it. All right, let's go on to the next one. Oops, wrong button, there we go. All right, organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is simply um, the scientific, it's basically a study of carbon. So when we think of organic, we think of the grocery store where we've purchased uh, some type of produce that has been uh, basically raised a certain way without pesticides, hormones, and that kind of stuff. But in our world, in our chemistry world, it simply means that it's made up of carbon. Now, the only exception is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the only carbon-containing molecule that is not considered to be organic, okay? All right, so what makes carbon so, so important? Well, right, it all, all starts right here, four valence electrons. Now, as you learned in our chapter 2A series of videos, valence means the outer uh, orbital or the outer shell or the outer energy level of an atom. And it's these valence electrons that are used to make the chemical bonds. So an atom may have 50 electrons, but the only ones that we care about are the ones on the outermost ring, and those are the valence electrons. Now, because this has four, it can make, or carbon has four, it can make four covalent bonds at once. Now remember, you have what is called the octet rule, in the outer shell for an atom, they want to have eight electrons. Let me write that in here, right? So that means eight electrons is the octet rule. So carbon has four. It needs to get four more, and it's gonna share those with up to four other molecules at once. And it's this valence electrons, this four valence electrons, that allows carbon to do all of the neat stuff that it can, all right? Now the most important thing that it can do is carbon can bond with other atoms just like itself. And it's gonna be able to form chains. Right here is a chain. It's gonna be able to form a ring. And this is a ring that also has a chain on it. And here we have another one, a chain with a ring. Okay. The carbon itself is pretty boring, but it's what gets attached to it. See, here you got a bromine. Here you got an OH group. All right, over here we've got some chlorine atoms attached, okay? It's, it's these special things that you can attach to this carbon chain 
that gives all of the neat uh, flavors and powers to these, these carbon molecules. Right? And so we're going to spend the rest of this chapter basically talking about what are the neat things that can be attached to a carbon chain or a carbon ring or a ring on a chain that gives these molecules all these special flavors. And it's how they are arranged they can become carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, the four type of molecules that make up living things. Okay, I told you this uh, video was going to be very short, so make sure you keep up with your studies. If you're one of my students, make sure you're keeping up on your menu and you make all of the deadlines. Okay, Until the next, vid next video, we'll see you next time.